Hello and welcome, this is Stacker 2020 and today I'm going to be talking about stacking, planning and budgeting. I just want to say a quick thank you to all of the, my subscribers and everybody who contributes in the comment sections on my videos. I'm learning a lot from all of you guys as I go along. I hope I'm helping other people as well, but i got to say you know, I'm learning a lot. So thank you so much to everybody who does uh, interact on these videos. It's really helping me grow as a stacker. So as I said, today I'm going to be talking about planning and budgeting. I put out these 925 commemorative coins to have a look at while I go, but they're not the focus, just something nice to look at while I'm talking. Um, when I'm talking about planning and budgeting, to me they're slightly different things. Um, budgeting is a form of planning, but when I'm talking about it, I mean like the actual financial aspect of what you're spending each month um, and putting into precious metals. Um, and then the planning side of things is sort of like the what, how, where and why, you know, that, that's what I call like the planning. Um, so I personally think that the most important thing when you're starting stacking to really consider is uh, what percentage of your portfolio do you want the precious metals to actually make up? Um, you know, you, you might have stop stops and shares, uh, properties and all of these sorts of things um, are part of your assets. Um, so what do you want uh, your, your percentage of gold and silver to make as your entire portfolio? Um, I think that's the first question you need to ask yourself. Um, and then you can actually start giving it a, a monetary value. You know, once you've worked out what sort of percentage you'd like to hold. Um, now, the thing I will say about things like stocks and shares, um, precious metals, you know, these are assets that you're acquiring. I personally believe these should be acquired from your extra cash. This shouldn't be the money that you need to spend for your everyday to day living. Um, I personally believe that the way I do it is I have a minimum of six months in my bank account for my expenses, you know, for my expenses like my, um, I don't have a mortgage, but my electric, my gas, my phone bills, you know, my car, all of these sorts of things. Um, I have about six months covered in my bank. Then I have about three months of physical cash um, in my stack. Um, and uh, I think that way, you know, I'm sort of covered in case there's problems with the banks or anything like that. Um, and then after that point, I have money in precious metals, stocks and shares, um, you know, and, and other arenas. And I think that's really important. You know, that's the important point there is that it's with my extra cash. You know, it's not the money that I need for my day to day living. And the most important thing, you know, about making the budget, you know, the financial side of things is to make sure that you're not overreaching, you're not overextending. Uh, the worst thing you can do is just buy to the point where you don't have money to cover things. You know, you, there's an emergency comes up, you've not put any money aside. And at that point, you're forced to sell your precious metals um, at a loss. And, uh, you know, it's just been a waste of time if that's the case. So you really need to take that into consideration, you know, that this is with your extra money, all your other expenses are covered. Um, and then start thinking about acquiring um, additional assets and you really do need to think of the, the long-term goal for you as well um, for some people it's going to be a short-term thing you know they're just planning on maybe collecting a set amount you know they might have a 500 ounces of silver 10 ounces of gold set amount in mind and maybe a set time frame that they want to get it get that into um, and then they have a very strict and quite rigid budget in that sense um, but for many other people, it's a much longer play and uh, this might be something that they're doing for the next 30 or 40 years. And in that case, you know, they're considering a much slower pace of, of collecting, of um, accumulating um, is probably much more sensible because, you know, even a few ounces a month over a long period of time really starts to add up and uh, you can end up with thousands of ounces um, over you know, a 30, 40 year period of collecting. And uh, so that's really something that you should consider too, you know, is do you think this is going to be a long term aim for you or something that you're just going to be doing for a short term and whether or not you have a fixed aim amount, you know, weight amount that you want to achieve. Um, and just jotting these down, you know, having an idea of them really will help you to stay focused. Um, there is a percentage amount which you know you then convert into a 
cash amount. So let's say you've worked out your percentage, you've worked out how much spare money you have each month. Um, I think the next thing you need to really work out is what percentage of the precious metals is going to be into gold or silver, or whether you're not just going to be collecting one over the other. And also then, you know, what percentage are you going to be collecting, which is just pure bullion and uh, set, or are you going to have semi-numismatics or collectibles? You know, these sorts of things you really need to plan in advance and work out in your budget. Um, I would recommend personally, and I think most stackers would say this as well, is that, you know, it's important to build up a, a strong foundation of either like generic silver or bars or um, government backed bullion before you even think about collecting and you know, getting into anything collectible. Um, I think that's sensible as well, because once you get into stacking or my personal experience has been, you know, once I got into it and I started doing it and you start getting into the forums more and, uh, you know, finding more and more YouTube channels and going onto social media, you just start accumulating more and more knowledge. You start getting a better idea of the market, you know, what's popular, what's not. And I think that really helps you in the long run to make uh, better decisions if you're going to start collecting semi-numismatic and collectible coins. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So some of the other things that you should really consider with your planning, um, and some of them are very simple, are things like storage. You know, if you're going to be going for collectible silver, which does have some major issues with toning and milk spotting, uh, storage becomes a very important thing, not just from the safety viewpoint of storage, but also from the condition maintenance um, viewpoint. You know, they're both two things that really need to be considered where you're going to be storing your precious metal safely um, and how you're going to maintain its condition. Um, and these sorts of things, you know, might affect what you end up stacking. If you live a very rugged rural lifestyle um, where your house is pretty much open to the elements, you know, um, maybe stacking something like silver collectibles isn't going to be sensible because you're going to be much more prone to, to condition problems. And uh, in that case, you end up losing your premiums. So, yeah, storage can be a really important consideration. Um, also, you know, if you are going to be considering flipping, you know, so buying semi-numismatic coins or buying coins you think that will increase their premiums over time uh, because of their collectible elements, um, then, you know, you're going to have to consider how and where you're going to be selling those things. Um, you know, if you don't have a good reputation on the forums or a great eBay account or, you know, maybe a strong following on Instagram, um, it's going to be hard, I think, to sort of get rid of those semi-numismatics and collector coins at a good value. Um, you might be able to sell them at lower than their sort of value because people want to pick up a bargain, they'll take a risk. But I think getting sort of like top dollar for them, um, it becomes quite difficult uh, when you're first starting out, you know, until you've started building up a bit of a reputation. Um, so that's also something you really need to take into consideration with your planning if, you're, if you are planning on picking up semi-numismatic coins uh, or collectible coins. Um, record keeping as well you know it's it's still a part of the planning i believe you know it's, it's sort of like the aftercare of planning you really need to be considering um keeping some even basic records you know even the way i mean i'm not the most what's the right word fastidious when it comes to record keeping but i do keep records of everything so if i'm ordering from an online uh, bullion dealer then i will print out my breakdown invoice you know which has every item i bought what i paid for it and then what i tend to do is on that invoice i will put the spot price of gold and silver on the day so i know what what premiums i've been paying um, likewise, if I go to a, you know, to a local coin shop and I get a printout, a breakdown of what I bought, that all gets filed. Um, I do some other more, more, you know, intricate sort of stuff, but not many on my gold uh, collectible things, but on, on my gen generic uh, bullion and, and uh, you know, junk silver and things like that, I don't really bother doing that. Um, I just print out file it, write down the, the spot on the day, 
and that's how I keep my records. It just means I can always go back and reference when I'm going to sell, making sure that I'm not undercutting myself and, and losing money. Um, so as I said, even that level of basic bookkeeping uh, really helps you with the planning, especially at the selling stage of it. So I, I think that sort of like, you know, covers it. There's obviously lots of other little things that you need to consider when you're planning and buying, like where you're going to get it from, um, you know, your shipping costs, uh, can you save on those? You know, all of these little sorts of things that you can tweak over time will help you uh, to make savings, which, you know, really can add up over the long run. Um, you know, as an example, let's say you're, you're planning on picking up 10 silver ounces a month, you know, 10 American eagles a month, that, that's your plan. Um, maybe if you just did it every two months, you know, and picked up a tube of 20, you'd save a bit on the premiums um, and also on the shipping rather than having two bunches of shipping, you know, or also, you know, storing um, your purchases, uh, multiple purchases with a bullion dealer before you have it shipped out. All of these things, you know, can really help lower your your cost average on on your on your precious metals um and should be considered you know and that's why sitting down with a pen and paper working out these sorts of things really can help not just save you money but keep your focus and i know for me personally since i've written down you know my my quite specific plan um of my budget what i spend each month on bullion what i spend each month on semi numismatics uh collectibles and also my breakdown from gold to silver it does help me with my purchases you know i look at what i bought that month if i'm looking you know because it's as i said at the beginning there's just so many nice coins out there and I'd like to have them all, but I'm just not silly enough to do it. You know, I, I do keep my focus. I do keep my end game in mind. And, uh, you know, and also I'm realistic about the selling, you know, and the, the risk of collector coins and semi numismatics going down in value as well as up. So, you know, because of all of those things, I do really stick to a, a tight budget when it comes to the semi numismatics and don't overspend. And as I said, having this written down, when I see a really nice coin and I'm like, ooh, should I get that? I look back at my plan, I look back at my budget and I'm like, well, I, I need to get that coin, you know, to add to this collection that I'm actually going for. And I don't have money in that part of my budget. To, to get anything else but that one coin I need. So it's helping me to just make more sensible uh, decisions and helping me to say no a lot more. Um, and that's, you know, really the aim of the plan and the budget, to keep your focus, to make sure that at the end of the run, you know, at the end of the year, that you've not overspent, that you have not picked up things that are, are don't fit into your plan and are going to be difficult for you to move on that are actually what you want and not going to give you a sense of of loss you know that you've oh god i've overspent i've got too many semi numismatics some of them haven't done well and i've lost money on them you know that's just what you want to avoid that's really not what what the idea of this is if you are stacking for the long term or the short term you know you want to what's the right word you want to make your stack the stack that you're going to be happy with you know you want it that at the end of the day when you sit there and you've got a pile of silver like this pile i've got sitting in front of me you don't want to be looking at it and thinking god i've spent way too much on this it's not part of my plan and now i've got to move it on maybe for a loss you know that's just not what you want so make the plan make a budget and stick to it so guys, I hope that helps you think a little bit about it and maybe makes you go back to the drawing board and have a look at your plan and see if you've got uh, enough of this, these sorts of things in place, you know, to give you some focus uh, with your purchases. Once again, guys, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And thank you so much for listening. You all have a lovely day. Bye bye.